Hello, this is Helgari. I'm the author of the uh, Skyrim Special Edition Downgrade Patcher, the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition Downgrade Patcher. See, even I can't pronounce it correctly. Um, and uh, I want to talk a little bit today about the uh, new update to the app. It's changed quite a bit. Uh, I want to talk about why we decided to make those changes, or I did uh, specifically, and um, some concerns people may have about those changes. Uh, so let's uh, let's start by talking about why this change was necessary. Well, see, in the past, what we did was uh, we take the old files and binary patch them, or the new files actually, and binary patch them in back to the old uh, files. So we'd find out the differences that were made in the two Skyrim versions and back patch them. The problem with that is it required you to have exactly the source files that we expected in order to be able to downgrade them. And that became really hard to track because people may have different versions. They may not realize which version they have installed. Um, and in addition, um, there was problems around uh, if someone cleaned an ESM file or updated some file um, and uh, the patcher wouldn't be able to recognize that. It was just kind of a bit of a mess. So this new approach is a lot simpler and the files are a lot smaller. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to contact Steam directly. Steam tracks all the old versions of these um, uh, games and uh, we're going to download specifically the files we need. This is a lot like the Depot Downloader uh, app that you've probably seen going around uh, which is an alternative method for downgrading. In fact, we use the same base library behind the scenes that the Depot Downloader uses, um, but instead what we're going to do is we're going to do very uh, we've tailored this more specifically towards your needs. So we're going to take specific files and download them instead of requiring you to know the Depot IDs and the manifest IDs and all that. We've tracked all that and we provide provide a much cleaner interface and some more options. So what I have as an example here today is a very basic Skyrim install that has been borked by the updater, right? We have the 1597 uh, SKSE install, which is the original S, uh, K, uh, uh, Skyrim Special Edition. Um, but if we see here in our properties and we go to details, uh, we have 16353 uh, as the product version, right? So the problem there is that this is a mismatch, it'll crash, SKSE may not even load, that sort of thing. So uh, let's go and uh, fix this. So first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to log into Steam. And I can hear you all the way from here, people saying, oh my goodness, this man's trying to steal my Steam information. There's a problem with that. Uh, first of all, Thank you for recognizing that that could be a risk. Let's talk about it and let's figure out why that's not the case. Um, there are two things that are required for two-factor authentication, which is what Steam implements, either with Steam Guard or with a 2FA uh, app. Um, those two factors of authentication are something you know and something you have. The something you know is what's in your brain, which is your password, and the something you have is your email account. Without both of those, you cannot log into Steam. So what you're going to see here in a second is I'll input my username and password, and then the app will ask for a code that came from the email, and that's a temporary code. After a couple minutes, that expires. So even if that code got leaked somewhere, uh, there would be no way for someone to access the account. One once this app communicates with Steam, Steam sends back another set of passwords and information that um, tie this app on this computer to Steam. So even if you were to take this and you know someone were to steal this information and put it on their computer, they couldn't use that file downloaded from Steam. It's it's all encrypted and there's there's good stuff there. So there's multiple levels of security. All that to say. Um, yes, you're typing your username and password in. There's a lot more that's required in order to get access to your account. This is safe. And behind the scenes, we are using the same libraries as the Depot Downloader. These are all open source. All this code is available on the internet. If you have any questions, feel free to ask or look uh, on the website, uh, on, on GitHub of the code, and you know uh, we can go from there. But uh, so with that out of the way, let's log in. Um, Okay, so I've entered my username and password. I'm gonna click log in. And you will see here that it says, uh, got request for auth code. And so now I'm on my phone here. I'm gonna wait and in a little bit, I should see a uh, Steam code. There we go. And uh, Steam told me to type in 5DDKM. Uh, and we're gonna click uh, confirm. And uh, now we're logged into Steam. And as you see here, this uh, setting token means that this is now uh, communicate with Steam and it's locked the app and everything down. So we're, we're good to go. Okay, so that's out of the way. Next thing we're gonna do is we need to select the Steam install location. 
which we're going to do here. This is our Skyrim Special Edition location. And what's happened at this point is um, the app has looked into the folder and said, oh, well, you know what? You have SKSE 1597, which we're going to assume is the version of Steam you want. And so it's automatically selected Skyrim SE 1597. And now we can select here if we want the best of both worlds or not. So if we just click this, it'll completely downgrade everything down to that version. It'll leave the Creation Club content in there um, that is in there, you know, deactivate that if you don't want it in your mod organizer or uh, mod organizer 2 or in vortex or whatever just just don't load that as part of your load order um, but otherwise what you can do here is select best of both worlds and what this will do is use all the new bsas and the esms with the old executable now I only suggest you use this if you have a setup that overrides the UI there are some problems uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but for now, we're going to click start downloading, and this is now going to talk to Steam. It's going to start downloading the files and go from there. Um, uh, so what's actually happening there? And that, that's all it took. Um, and if we go here to Skyrim SE, show more options, properties, details, and we see here we're now at 1597. It just went and downloaded the old executables and put them in here and overwrote the updated ones. So we're good to go. This is now the best of both worlds. If you select, if you deselect that option of best of both worlds, you'll have to download all the BSAs. Skyrim's, you know, what, 18 gigs? It'll take a little bit of time, but uh, we use more or less the same method Steam uses when downloading, and so it's pretty fast. Uh, two things. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I was saying here that only use this best of both worlds if you know what you're doing. And the reason is, is that there are some parts of the interface in the new version of Steam that are different from the old. And so the best option there is if you're going to use best of both worlds, make sure you're uh, doing a enough UI updates that it removes those changes. So you're going to definitely want Sky UI. And I would also recommend um, something like cleaner start menu. It's something to do with the start menu is a little wonky when you're mixing the old EXE and the new uh, assets, the new interface assets. So just override that with a different mod and you'll be fine. Um, so the other thing was like, why do we need to access the Steam account at all? Well, uh, it's specifically this part right up here, uh, which says requesting depot key. So what's gonna happen is, is that all of these files themselves are pretty much on a wide open CDN on the internet and you can download them, but they're all encrypted. And unless you have the decryption key, you cannot decrypt those files. And so that's really all we're using the Steam account thing here for is to say, um, is this user allowed to access the uh, decrypt these files? Steam says, yes, they are. And then we say, can we please get the decryption key? And Steam says, here you go. And then we use that decryption key uh, to decrypt the files as we download them. Um, and that's the same thing Steam does. So that's uh, basically it. Um, click the support button if you would like to donate and help the project along. But aside from that, that's pretty much it. When new versions of um, Skyrim come out, um, I will re be releasing new versions of this app. Um, when you click these different versions here, uh, and you can you can you know mix and match these options just fine. But when you when you click these, there's a bunch of settings behind the scenes that I'll have to update with each release of Skyrim. Um, but uh, it shouldn't take too long, and we should have new versions out within a couple minutes of the game being released, each new version of the game. So uh, that's it for now. Um, and, um, you know, if you if you really don't like the idea of having this information in the app, I, when you're done to, you can click log out, um, and that will clean out the um, uh, saved, you know, login information that we have. Um, and uh, and it's pretty much it. There's, there's some log files that stumps in the place where you run it from, but aside from that, just no registry keys set or anything like that. It's it's clean there. Uh, as always, if you have any questions about the app, concerns, feel free to contact me either on the Nexus or on GitHub. Um, GitHub's probably better. Um, the source code's on GitHub if you'd rather build this yourself. Um, and that's all I have for today. So thank you so much for watching.